Visa. Just like Microsoft has beaten. Guys, we've already done Google and Microsoft in the last 30 minutes. They're posting today. You need to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. We have a very busy earnings season. The next week or two is going to be a ton of videos. And even when it's not earnings season, Mo and I make videos all day long because people in our office don't want us working with them. They just want us making videos because they think we're really annoying, which is very true about me, but not necessarily Mo. So... <laughs> Visa reported $1.93 in profit per share versus, a, versus estimate 187 and $7.8 billion versus, in revenue versus 7.57. And they also announced dividend. an increase in their dividend from $0.37 cents to $0.45 cents per quarter. So what are they doing after hours, Mo? Up a uh, half percent, not even. Yeah. I, I'm okay with that dividend increase. So the stock 52-week high is 236, low of 175. Um, let's see here. This is their, okay. So gap net income of $1.86, um, or one and the non gap is one ninety three. Is that the non gap? That was the non gap net revenues, an increase of 19%. Wow. Full year results and gap net income of 15 billion or $7 per share, $7 per share. What's the company currently selling for? Oh, wow. That's a hefty premium. Okay, they returned 2.9 and 14.8 billion of capital to shareholders uh, in the form of share repurchases and dividends. Guys, I don't like the share repurchase. Uh, why do why I do expensive think. companies like buying back I shares? Eight pillars, and I'll tell you real quick. Yeah, I don't. I oh don't, my god, 28 percent. Like yeah, I don't like it because so, I'm just. I'm. Th this is ridiculous for being for seeing a five year PE of. Explain why, Mo. 27. So, guys, what this is saying. I mean. These two metrics, when we see these two metrics being red and all the other metrics are green, that just tells us one thing, simply that the company is overpriced. Maybe. If it had More huge... likely than not. Well, it's company like the company size of Visa, the way you pay a bigger premium for a company is higher return on invested capital, which I think Visa does have. 19.6. But they're really huge. I mean, right. and they're consumer driven. And if we hit a recession, yes. they're going to be hit. So that's interesting. Why don't we go back? So the other thing is when they're buying back expensive shares, they're taking your money and investing it for you at really poor rates of return. That's the reason we don't like it. We want them buying super cheap shares. Let's say the stock was selling at 50 bucks a share. And before you say, that's not going to happen, just hold my beer. I'm not <laughs> saying it will happen, but crazier things have happened. Um, go ahead. This is actually quite surprising. 2007, 3.34 billion in revenue. 2008, 5.54. And they grew. They just kept growing. Oh, wow. I was expecting to see a drop in the last mm -hmm. recession. Okay. Well, Visa coming in hot. Let's Wait, see. What are analyst estimates? About a 50%, 60% increase in profit in the next five years. Revenue, which is growing about mid double digits, mid teens. Revenue growing at low double digits, high single digits for revenue growth. A lot of analysts following it. Now, I use these analyst estimates, as you know, as you've seen our videos, as a high range on our stock analyzer tool. But Visa is the kind of company. That if you said to me, Paul, what kind of stocks do you want to own? There's like 10 or 20 really, really large companies that I want to own at some price. Visa is one of them. Yeah. American Express, another one. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon, all these big companies. I just have to wait for the right price. I'm not a believer. There's a difference between stock and the company. Just because the company is awesome does not make it stock awesome. Usually it's exactly the opposite. Usually everybody loves the company. So they say, Look, buy what you love and stock goes up and it gets to nosebleed levels and it doesn't make sense. So, Mo, yes. give me your revenue growth assumptions for Visa. Five, seven, and nine. Even okay. nine profit margin. High, but that's Huge like, profit oh margin. God. If, uh, let's go 48, 49, and 50. I would go 47, 49, and 51. Because they were touching on 51 here. Okay. That's an aggressive assumption, but yeah. if they were able to grow 9% a year, they're probably going to have pretty good margin along the way because their fixed costs are... I mean, it's such a, I mean, what's their gross margin? 80%? It has to be. Gross margin, yep, 80.7. Well, I mean, guys, that means for every dollar extra they bring in revenue, 80 cents of it goes to the bottom line. So once they cover their fixed costs, it's 50, it's, it's 80%. It's, it's insane. I can get down with that. Same free cash flow. Free, same for free cash flow? Well, Would look at their free cash flow in the last five years, yeah. A little bit higher? I'd go 48, 51, and 54. Okay. All right, PE and price of free cash flow. Um. 15, 16, and 17. How about 14, 15 and a half, and 17? That's fine. 
Okay. And the same for the same price for of free cash, cash flow. Cash flow. Yeah. And then All right, guys. Do the same return that we did for Google and Microsoft. 12, 13, 14. Yes. Guys, the more, the higher your assumptions, the bigger your desired return should be. That is drive. That's giving you your margin of safety because you can get nine or 10% from investing in any sort of ETF long, an SPY ETF long term. Right? Yeah, I said any sort of cash. ETF. Yeah, not any sort of ETF. Not ARC. If you have a market, yeah, ARC. <laughs> you want negative 12% return a year, buy ARC. Um, so the stock's at 195. Now remember, this stock is on my watch list currently. I love Visa. High margin. I mean, it is the brand for, 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 I mean, for um, credit cards. I look at this going, damn, I just gotta wait for the stock to be at the right price. I can't wait to see this price. So at 195. Um, <laughs> Let's see. My guess is it's going to be around the 120s. I think it's going to be at 100. Okay. Let's see. Oh, you were right. Low price of 90, high price of 125 to 130, mid price of 106 to 110. It's on my watch. That's why I had it at 100. Guys, okay. I need to increase that watch list price. However, I want you to remember, I have it on my watch list. Not as a price to buy it at, a price to start selling puts on it. So I'm going to change the watch list price. I'm going to put mine at 130. That's what I was going to do. So okay. again, it doesn't mean I'm buying it at 130. It means when it hits 130, it's going to notify me. And then I'm going to start selling puts at much lower prices. Maybe at 110 or 100 or 90. I have to sit there and assess it when it gets down there. Because it might take a little bit of time to get down there. Or in the meantime, the fundamentals will get better. Yep. And the stock will slightly fall and it'll all meet together. That's another factor involved. So guys, I need you to do something for Mo and I. Mo and I determine our self-worth based on how many subscribers we have. Right. So please subscribe to us because we have a lot of videos coming out this week. My mother has always told me I was a failure. And I told her I have 174,000 people who disagree with you, mom. Actually, probably a chunk of those people probably disagree, probably agree with her. So follow the channel. We have lots of videos going, uh, especially during this week and even because it's earnings week, but even without earnings week, we do two or three videos a day. Our community is awesome. Check out everythingmoney.com. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good night. Thank you.